Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. Um, this video is going to be a little bit shorter. Um, it's something still quite important though that I want to touch on. I'm going to be covering how to deal with financial stress. Maybe not all of you have come across this, but most of you will have suffered with the guilt or the stress of having sort of money that you owe somebody like debt or just not being able to pay your bills, not being comfortable with your lifestyle. And that's kind of what I wanted to talk about in this video. So in terms of backstory, like the roots, when you're gonna feel financial stress, it can come from a few different reasons. Obviously everybody's lives are gonna have different financial stresses that they feel under pressure from, but your common ones are gonna be either debt from university, anything education-based, rent, bills, stuff like that, or I actually think they might be the top two. Yeah, the top two that I've probably gone through that I felt. Number three will be more so if you're entrepreneurial, if you've got a business, um, financial stress could be that maybe your profit margins are really small, um, you're not actually keeping much profit from your business, you just feel like you're putting out a lot, or that you're not comfortable with where you're at and you really need to to sort of make more money to be able to like scale and grow your business. In terms of how financial stress makes you feel, um, if you have felt it in the past at all, you're gonna know that it's one of the worst feelings in the world. It's not like normal stress, it's all almost like this just like pit of like a knot in your stomach where you feel so sick and you kind of want to ignore it and just like remove that thought because it's Financial stress isn't something that most people can kind of click their fingers with and make it go away. It's more so a process and something you have to go through to be able to pay back a set amount, whether it be to the government or to your friends or to your family. And yeah, it's not a nice feeling, basically. I know myself, like from student loan, I've got over 20,000 pounds in student debt and I only went to university for a year and a half. <laughs> so that was like maintenance loans, tuition loans, etc. I spent money that I didn't have and I shouldn't have spent and I knew whilst I was spending it damn like I really don't have this money to spend but I just did it for some reason put myself into that situation and then when I like logged in to my student like debt calculator to see how much I owed I felt sick and I was like I can't believe that year and a half of my life it wasn't wasted I never say I, I never like to think I've wasted a part of my life it's all a lesson but a part of my life that I didn't continue to pursue with, obviously that maybe taught me that that wasn't the right thing for me. It was a lesson, but it was a very expensive lesson to learn um, for over like 20,000 pounds. Like, I don't think I'd learned the value of, of money yet. I'm not from a background with loads of money. Um, so I never really put that much emphasis on expensive stuff or materialistic things. I didn't ever really feel the need to be rich or make a lot of money. So to me, like spending money was like, oh, it's just money, like it doesn't matter, like you make it back. But then once you have that debt and once you start sort of like, I have my own business now and I track my money pretty well and I, I value it a lot more so because I know the amount of work that I have to put in to have a certain amount coming out and after taxes, like how much do I actually keep as net profit? So yeah, like I think because I, like coming from that situation, not valuing it and then coming out of it and now knowing how much money actually like means to me, like how much work I have to put in and how much I value the money that I make now. Looking at that amount of money and thinking I didn't really need to spend it all and I could have done things differently is a bit frustrating. Um, so yeah, that's kind of one angle. And then the other angle is being in debt to friends or family. This is probably even worse because obviously it's somebody that you either love or you're close to and obviously they've trusted you to give you an amount of money. You've either said like, look, I need like a bit of help out with X, Y, Z. I will pay you back the money either with like a bit of interest or I'll just pay you back in installments as I get the money back, like I promise kind of thing. And putting yourself into that position and then not actually changing anything in your life, that means that you will be bringing in more money and be able to save and give it back to them. You end up in this awkward position where you feel guilty whenever you see that friend, you just kind of like know that something hanging over you, whether they're pestering it for you or they feel awkward asking you for it. It's kind of like one of those unspoken things where it's like you give someone the money back, but it's hard asking for money from somebody. And yeah, actually another thing that that kind of links to is your pride. If, a lot, if any of you have asked for money before, you know it's kind of like, especially from family, if you've ever had to ask family or, or a friend and you've had to admit that you're in a tough position or you're struggling and you're like, hey, um, like, could I borrow some money? It doesn't feel great. Um, I've done that before. I've literally been at dinner with, with my boyfriend, actually. I was at dinner with him. It was our first ever date. I remember being sat at the dinner table and I was like, I'm like looking at the menu, seeing what I could order. And I was like, in my bank account, I'm not sure how much I have, but I knew I had around 15 pounds. And I was like, okay, I can probably get like a starter and a drink. And I don't want to come across as like one of those girls that goes for dinner and like 
is like watching like what she eats and stuff because it wasn't that and I really wanted to go on the date but I just I was trying to calculate what I could eat and I was so worried the whole dinner that I didn't have enough to pay for, for the food and I was like maybe like my card won't go through at the end and like that feeling like it feels awful because it's so embarrassing it's like what if that person like looks at you and like how how do you not have enough like like 15 pounds is like nothing like 15 20 pounds is nothing but to me like when when I was so low on money after just like spending it not having enough not having a stable income with work making like 400 pounds a month at one point um I didn't really have enough for, for rent I was behind on rent food I kind of stopped eating quite a lot normally like if my friends noticed that I didn't eat like they'd be inviting me around to that they never said it but like they'd invite me around like for food and like they'd cook and stuff and it was like I knew people would kind of like probably noticed a little bit um so they helped me out but like it's just embarrassing and it's awkward and it's something that you don't really want to expose about yourself so yeah that's kind of like the backstory um that's sort of the roots where it comes from in terms of a solution so this is actually something i first started doing when i started at mlm so if you guys don't know um, mlm is multi-level marketing basically like door-to-door -door sales but i did it for b2b so instead of residential which is door-to-door -door, i went to businesses all around london birmingham brighton went to a few cities basically pitched and in that, every morning we'd have sort of training around business, sales, mindset before we went out and pitched for the rest of the day. And then also at the end of the day, we'd go over all of our numbers, our stats, like track everything, all our metrics and sort of do the same thing day in, day out. And one thing that they taught me to calculate was a break even. So your break even is basically the amount of money that you need to survive. So it incorporates all of your basic expenses and wraps them up and says, okay, this is the amount of money that you need to live on a weekly basis or a monthly basis and anything above that is going to be profit for you to keep. So with your break even, I would recommend actually writing this down now and doing it with me as you're watching the video. But basically I would split it into a few basic categories. So the first one being transport. So that would depend on where you live as to whether you spend that on maybe a bus, um, if you're in London like an Oyster, Oyster card, um, either buses, taxis, if you have a car like petrol stuff like that that's transport is a category number two would be food so anything that you spend on food per week how much you need to survive don't like obviously if you have a lavish lifestyle um, and you can afford it like add in that normal amount but if you know you need to be spending more spending less sorry probably try and take out a night out that you go for dinner with your friends or like the extra few beers that you have after work like try and bring it down to like a basic level but still put a little bit of of sort of moving room in case you do go out. So add like maybe like 30 pounds extra onto that. So have one for food, have one for transport. Then you wanna have one for bills. So this, this could be rent, it could be rent including like council taxes if you pay for your own place, um, electricity, heating, water, um, Wi-Fi, everything like that under bills. Also your phone bill. So any recurring monthly bills that come in. Under that section as well, if you're like an entrepreneur or you have a business, you'll also have your softwares, stuff like that. If you have a lot of expenses under software, stuff for your business apps and stuff like that, um, maybe create a separate category for that, like business expenses. And then as your fourth category, you wanna have sort of miscellaneous. Um, so this is any extras, it could be toiletries, um, shampoo, like conditioner, makeup if you're a girl, um, or maybe like clothes. Think about how much you'd spend in a month and divide it by four to give you a weekly weekly output on clothing um, and then basically you want to add up the total of all those categories and whatever your total is for weekly that's your break even that means that every single week you need to be making that amount of money to be able to live and stay the same with no savings anything else you make above that figure is savings for you so that's something that you can put into a separate bank account I would personally recommend having a savings account. Me, myself, I have a Barclays current account and then I have savings as well. So any money that comes into my current that is above my break even, I send it over to my savings and I just store it there. I'll be creating a company in a few months time, like in a month when I go back to London, but then that'll be where I put like, I'll have like tax money and everything like separated from that. But yeah, I would recommend having like a current account, having a savings account and putting anything above your break even into that account. So yeah, I hope that made sense. I think it was a little bit of a shorter video than the other ones, but um, basically that. So if you're feeling with financial stress, you need to save, put a break even in place, see what your outgoings are, what they need to be, and then be strict on yourself, track how much you actually spend out, and then put all your savings into a different account. So yeah, I hope that helped. If you have any feedback, leave 
a comment in the section below and I will see you guys in the next video.